Tom Waits said something about New York. You like Tom Waits? I think he's underrated. I think he's got great. He's got a great. Uh, he's great at quips and quotes. He's, mm -hmm. Check him out on on YouTube. He's got some montages and supercuts of him being hilarious. What does he say about? Um, I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. That was the one. Yeah, that was the one that one. sold me. I was like, this guy's awesome. Yeah, but his music because he's a, just a genius musician. Yeah. Anyway, he was talking about New York. I was walking around these. I'm in New York right now. We're in New York right now. It's still a magical city to me. A lot of Agreed. people are quite cynical about it, about the state of things. But so good. <laughs> well, not not like Michael Malice, like a lot of friends of mine. They're just a lot of folks. I mean, San Francisco, New York, there's something about the pandemic where people have become quite cynical about the place they are and they tried to escape. It's there's interesting. True. I mean, they're asking some difficult questions about where they are in life. They're having like a self-imposed midlife crisis is is good i think for everybody to go through this process but i think i hope new york reemerges. it at, will as the flourishing place for the weirdos anyway the tom wade said new york of course is to be in endless surreal situations where a fifty thousand dollar gunmetal mercedes pulls up in a puddle of blood and out steps a 25 karat blonde with a two dollar wristwatch Woo! And he goes, he keeps going on. So like, it's like, um, that's like bars. He's like a rapper. Yeah. yeah, He's good. Um, but basically just the absurdity uh, of it all, lots of money, lots of weirdos, uh, degenerates and dreamers and the whole, the whole mix of it. Do you think, um, do you think that's an accurate description of what New York is today? Like, is there still place for the weirdos and just the interesting artists the the edgy the comedians the the creators the 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 um, the entrepreneurs like as opposed to like Wall Street as opposed to like rich folk and then like hopeless folk yeah I think it's definitely changed a lot there's a there's a tiny corner for us weirdo artists New York used to be where you went to make it as a painter or whatever a comedian or a singer and there were all these dives and shit boxes and all these places you could go. And now there's a, now it's more pink berries and subway sandwiches and Chase Banks. So <laughs> it's definitely lost a lot of its uh, creative edge. It's just money. Money keeps coming in. And now you see all these comedians move to Nashville, Austin, Denver, whatever. So uh, it doesn't have the the power it used to have of like you gotta be here if you want to make it. That's definitely gone. Uh, so that hurt the city a lot. The city is is way more soulless. When I moved here in '07. I mean, not only did I get mugged three times in the first year, but it was a hub of like, it felt like things were happening here. You know, it was, it was an energy, it was an electricity and we still have the electricity, but it's also maybe just cause there's Times Square, there's Soho, there's a uh, wall street. So we got the staples, but there is a little bit of that. It's almost like a marriage. Like, yeah, we're in love, but it, it's not as passionate as it once was. That's how I would equate New York. What gives you hope? You're pretty hopeful about it though. I'm hopeful just because I know it's magical and I and I think it has to be. I mean, it's the epicenter of America. Like, this is where the immigrants came and this is where the stock market is and the entertainment industry, a lot of it is here. So I think it, it's it's going to happen, but it, something like the bottom has to fall out and then people have to move back here and all that. So something, the corporations are kind of fucking us. They're just buying everything. Well, that's true for everything. That's Austin, true for everything. Uh, it's true for Austin probably as well. People are just buying out land and all that kind of stuff. You always hear a Hemingway and Dali and all these guys went to Paris in the 20s or whatever that was. Yeah, I get it now. I used to be like, why do these guys go to Paris? You know, why do these uh, artists? And now I get it because it's like, it's freer there. That's why Austin became like that Paris where everybody's like, I got to get out of LA. I'm going there. And uh, maybe, but we came back from that. You know, the 70s were wild and 90s were cool. So maybe it'll come back. It might just take a decade. Well, there's always, that's how stories are told. There's always pockets of like Paris within New York, right? True, true. Of, of there's just an opportunity to let your weird flourish is there in New York, I'm sure. There, I mean, um, it's there. You got to find it. Before it was front and center. What's your favorite thing about New York? Like, what, what kind of, things just like i mean how long is this pod i could go on it's just, it's too much to to put into one hour we've got other questions but 
I love that one neighborhood is wildly different than the next. I'm in Little Italy, and then you take four steps. Now I'm in Chinatown. I mean, and then the history there, and then the stories, and the food, and the culture, and all that. And then you go 10 feet over here, and now you're in Brooklyn, and this is insane. It's a whole other world. And it's it's almost like a little America in one, you know, uh, city. And it's great. And uh, just the fact that they pulled it off, like... Fifth Avenue goes way up, and you're like, there's a billionaire's house next to a hobo, and then this is a black guy who's, who's fighting with a Cuban guy, and an Asian guy's uh, trying to get in the middle of them, and the cabbie's from uh, the Middle East, and there's so many beautiful women here, and there's so many brilliant minds here, and, and the pace is great, it keeps people moving, I mean, it just, you can't beat it. I mean, the city will fuck you in the ass, too, don't get me wrong, you land at JFK, and you're like, oh, God, I got mugged, my, uh... My Uber driver called me a homo. Uh, I stepped in, in human shit. Where the fuck am I? Um, so, yeah, it's it's bad news. But that bad news, it's almost like the bullying. It kills you in a weird way, but it makes you stronger. and You build more layers and layers and layers. That's why some new guy, some hayseed from Milwaukee shows up. <laughs> You've been here 10 years and you go, let me let me help you out. Because uh, you 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 got to adjust. You're going to get your ass kicked for like six months. But I know the ropes a little, and uh, I think you need a little of that. If the treadmill's not on, you're not going to run. New York, the treadmill's on, so it just makes you run, and it makes you better. And look, it wears on you. You probably lose 10 years of your life living in New York versus, uh, you know, Indianapolis. But, it's a, you know, it's a better life. Have you seen 25th Hour? Yeah, it's, with Ed it's Norton. been a while. Um, Spike Lee joint. Yeah, Spike Lee joint. I mean, uh, Ed Norton. There's a there's a whole like monologue there about New oh, York. Oh, that's right. But they're talking about just he he has like a mix. It's there's like melancholy music, I think, or just a melancholy feel to the whole thing. But there's an anger and a disgust with the city. Yeah. But through the anger and the disgust comes out like a a love for the city. Same with was Taxi Driver in New York. Oh yeah, it's going yeah. crazy. Yeah. So like that, there's something about the, what is that? What is that 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 uh, grit? of the city that like pushes you down. Well, that's the beauty of the city is it's this tribal human nature, like the sex shops and fist fights and racism and all tension, but yet it's the epicenter of technology and finance and sophistication yeah. on Fifth Avenue. So you get that juxtaposition. It's kind of like in Boston, you go to Boston, they got MIT, they got Harvard, they got all this shit. And then they got the, fishermen the blue collar douchebags the irish guys the immigrants you know and you get that mix of like insanely smart with wicked pissa and these these two worlds and that's what that's a good thing it's like when a black guy fucks an asian lady that's a good looking kid you get a mix <laughs> yeah. you know we're mixing two totally different things are coming together and it makes it it's like peanut butter and chocolate peanut butter and chocolate i've never tried that what Peanut butter. Maybe I have. I'm talking, talking about Reese's, man. Like Reese's, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Oh, it's the best candy. Yeah. Without the fakeness of LA, without the without the kind of um, with the facade. Yeah, LA's tough. 